you think of cyberspace a bit like a pyramid mm -hmm. where the net techs are providing that base and that like there's the infrastructure you know their daily operations is keeping it all patched and keeping it you know, generally what we would call like a good cyber hygiene um, and then it's the job of you know the cyber warfare workforce to come in there and maybe do an active hunt to look for uh, malicious activity or if there's a you know, an incident that's occurred, we go in there and see what happened. Starting from coming in with a cyber warfare analyst, we, we actually don't need the qualifications, we'll give them to you when you get here um, and we'll put you through our training pipeline. You know, if you can show that aptitude for the job uh, and really the, the thing that's going to help you most is do you like computers and do you like working with computers and um, you know, playing around with them, seeing what different changes to configurations happen. Um, that's probably a really good indicator that you'd be a good fit for the cyber warfare workforce. The defence will support, um, or the Air Force in particular, will support everything um, your whole way through study, whether you want to progress further um, from what they, they train you up to do. I was pretty, pretty lucky to have the opportunity to study, uh, I guess, a two, three year computer science course throughout school. So instead of doing something like chemistry, I was able to learn a bit of programming. Uh, which is a really good uh, exposure for me in being able to you know, learn kind of more about what I liked. Um, and that was a good, I guess, precursor to you know, getting involved in something that does involve a little bit of programming here and there and um, you know, a good blend of technical and managerial. We, we generally do a, a bit of PT, so physical training is not only good for the body, but also for the mind. Um, uh, we, as a net tech, we maintain um, and manage all the um, deployable systems, uh, computer systems. Um, most of our day is administering that as well as um, conducting, um, basically getting, getting everything ready for exercises, ready to go out the door and provide for, for customers, whether they be military or not. Generally my day starts with looking at what's happened in the world of cyber, having an abreast of what's going on in the world then starts looking at, okay, do I need to develop something and look at how this would look to me as a network operator and will I be able to find that when I'm looking for those things and start working towards that. When you're, I guess, your job role is to be out there defending those systems, it's important to know what the, the current threats are. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we try to, I guess, keep up to speed with that. Um, and then, I guess, my day, you know, could be if we've got an incident that we need to respond to, it's looking or planning about how we're going to go about responding to that incident, gripping up the resources and the people that we need to respond to that, and then actually uh, either engaging with a customer, you know, another unit or you know, whoever it may be, to get out there, find the information, find out how it happened, and then provide them advice on how they can make their system more secure and pass that back to, say, a net tech like Steve, who he's probably going to be the one that actually implements those changes. Um, uh, I suppose that's on the incident response side and then on a defensive cyber ops side it would be more that like planning the mission um, when you're you know how does the mission commander want this mission to be run and so making sure that you can fit in there and make sure that his mission is going to be secure in cyberspace and not in, like adversely impacted by an adversary. It'd have to be the opportunity to see the world, not just for work. Um, we, we get opportunities, like we spoke about earlier, for, for sport. Like We have a, a Defence Force uh, skiing team, which goes, they travel the world going skiing, so that's another, another big benefit. Early in my career, going out and just seeing like country, Australia, and being out and sitting on top of a hill and enjoying just peaceful, just doing some work and then making sure the system's up and then you've got some time to just enjoy the scenery that is Australia. Like a humble man priming. It's good. Just sitting on top of a hill. <laughs> yeah. You know the feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> um, I think my, my favourite is working with cool stuff, uh, cool tools, uh, smart people, people that are driven. If everyone's you know, fit and healthy, I guess that's another big one. Mm. Um, it, 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 enables the team to work better and you can rely on each other because you won't be you know, broken down or anything like that. And it's amazing how easy you get used to it. Yeah.
and enjoy it. And it's it's not an impost. It might be a culture shock to some people, but once you get used to it and you get into that cultural mindset of Air Force, it seems like second nature to you by the mm. degree. Well, it's a great way to meet people, make new friends. Mm. Like it doesn't have to be you know defence mandated PT that you're doing. It mm. doesn't have to be you know your unit PT. You, know, you could be like when I uh, posted to Adelaide here. Uh, I was part of like a cycling group and we'd go around and you know that was you know great because it uh, I guess covered a breadth of people from all different backgrounds within Air Force, different you know ranks, different roles um, and that was a really good way to just meet new people mm. and uh, talk with people that are outside of your little microcosm that might be your unit or the team that you work with.